tires should be rotated every 12,000 kilometers or 7,500 miles. Uh-oh. So I've been real bad about rotating the tires on my truck, and that's completely on me. If you haven't rotated yours yet, and you're already past 7,500 miles, you want to do that, I'm going to show you how. This is the bare minimum tools that you need for this job. You can use the bottle jack that comes with your truck and the lug wrench that comes with your truck. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, uh, but you can. I'll be using this floor jack, but if you're using your bottle jack, then make sure you are using the bottle jack jack locations. Uh, you can find those in your owner's manual or in my how to change your flat tire video. And instead of this lug wrench, I'm going to use an impact gun. But yes, it can be done with just a lug wrench. In order to be safe, you really need to have two jack stands. Now, this front tire right here is going to be in the air the whole time. It's the first tire to come off, last tire to go on. So you, at very minimum, have to have one jack stand. But I'm not going to recommend you just use one jack stand and then a uh, floor jack to lift it up. Uh, definitely use them both. Here's another tool we're going to need after we're done rotating the tires. This will relearn the tire pressure monitoring system so that it knows which, which wheels are on which axle. I want to say this thing was like $10 from Amazon. Real cheap. I'll put a link in the description. Now, this does require a 9-volt battery, so if you don't have one lying around, make sure you order one when you order the device. And this uh, does not just work on... Silverados, but pretty much every GM car that has a tire pressure monitoring system. First tire that needs to come off is the passenger side on the front. While we're here, let me show you why you need to rotate your tires more often than I do. Uh, if you look here, hopefully you can see, there's a raised piece of rubber in here that's called a wear indicator. And if you look, you can see I'm nowhere near to that wear indicator with the tread. Still plenty of tread before we hit the wear indicator. Let's take a look at a back tire. So this is 38,000 miles. And if you look, here's a wear indicator right here. And we are right up on it. Technically, I should probably be replacing these tires <laughs> on the back anyway. Um, I'm not. I'm going to put them on the front and uh, try and get, uh, well, uh, a couple more months out of them. And then I'll replace them. But that is completely on me. That's not on Chevrolet. Uh, that is on me. I didn't rotate the tires. Now the rear tires have wore way more than the front tires. This tire is coming off and it is going all the way over on the uh, driver's side rear. And then the driver's side rear is moving to the driver's side front. Driver's side front is coming over here to the passenger side rear. Passenger side rear is going up here. So this one comes off first and goes on last. So before we jack this up, we want to break loose all of the lug nuts. When I say break loose, that just means get them so they're not completely tight. Uh, you'll have a very hard time loosening them uh, when the tire's in the air. That takes care of the first one, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the rest of them while I'm at it. So there's another reason you don't want to use the bottle jack. I have used my uh, floor jack to lift up on the control arm. And I got the jack stand right underneath the jacking point for the bottle jack. I'm using the jack stand where the bottle jack would be. So it'd be <laughs> hard to jack this up with a bottle jack and then put a uh, jack stand in place of the bottle jack. First tire is off. We're going to take it around to the driver's side back. But this is a great time to check out your brakes anytime you have a tire off. You can see at almost 40,000 miles, 38,000 miles, these brakes look fantastic. Speaking of wear, let's talk about tire wear. When you are rotating your tires, make sure you check the tire wear all across the tire. Make sure it is even all the way across. It certainly is on this tire. You want to do this to every tire. Just make sure they are wearing evenly. If they are not wearing evenly, you've got a suspension problem more than likely. So now we need to take the driver's rear off. I have put a chalk on that front wheel up there. Uh, anytime you lift up the rear of a, a rear wheel drive vehicle, make sure you uh, chalk the front. I'm just bringing up one side, but still, uh, and it is on a jack stand over on the other side. 
The last thing you want is this thing to roll uh, over you, fall off a jack stand, uh, could kill you, or it could just severely damage your truck. I am just going to throw the other jack stand underneath the frame as a precaution, but I'm not actually going to put it down on the jack stand. Jack stands in place, so if the floor jack were to fail, it'll just fall about a half inch onto it. Again, this is a good time. Check your brakes. Rear brakes look great as well. It's not as easy as that looks. That's years of practice right there. Always start your lug nuts by hand. Make sure you're not cross-threading them. You always want to tighten in a star pattern. Okay, now I'm going to bring it down, uh, and then later on I'm going to go around and hand tighten each lug nut uh, by hand instead of with the impact. Telling you that now, in case I forget later. Okay, we are at the driver's front, getting ready to put the driver's rear onto the driver's front. Quick note when using a floor jack, don't ever put any of your body parts underneath the vehicle uh, while it's being held up by a floor jack or a bottle jack or anything else unless you absolutely have to there's no need to do it and it uh, could save an appendage or two remember how i said to check the brakes uh, don't always assume that if one side of your brakes is good that the other side is also going to be good uh, these are fine but don't assume. Moving on to the rear passenger. All right, in the home stretch. Oh, I'm faster than a lug wrench, huh? Yup, brakes look good. Nothing looks wonky in the suspension. Probably should have mentioned, but uh, don't forget to chalk that front tire. Let this one down, move on to the front. All right, we are back to where we started, which means we don't have to take a tire off. Just put one on. Might have messed up the star pattern a little bit on that one. It'll be okay. Okay, that's all four tires, but hang on a second. I got a little more info for you. Since we just basically swapped the fronts to the back and the backs to the front, that means we've got to let some air out of the front, put some air in the back. The back should have 70 and the front should have 60 on a 2500. If you're watching this video and you've got a 1500, check your owner's manual to see what your tire pressure should be. But a 2500, 70 on the back, 60 on the front. If you've got an air compressor, no problem. If you've if you don't have an air compressor, that's no problem either. Just go out to your local Wawa or Sheets. The air is free there, and you can just let some air out, put some air in. Now, if you don't have a Wawa or Sheets, um, I'm sure there's a chain around you somewhere that has free air. In fact, if you don't have a Wawa and Sheets near you, uh, and you do have some place that is and has got free air, put it in the comments so other people can find it, uh, just in case they don't know where they can get free air, because why pay for it? We talked about the star pattern already. Here's a picture of it from the owner's manual. You also are supposed to torque the lug nuts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and torque the lug nuts. I know some of you aren't, that's okay. Just try and get them all the same amount of tightness. 
All right, it's not okay. I can't say that it's okay. You're supposed to torque them to 140 foot pounds. So do that or you'll get in trouble by someone somewhere. Actually, what GM says is it could cause uh, brake pulsing if the lugs are torqued to different, you know, differing amounts of uh, torque. It could cause some uh, brake pulsation and probably uneven tire wear. So uh, at least make sure they're, <laughs> they're roughly tightened the same, right? 140 foot pounds with your torque wrench and in the star pattern, which I just showed you. It's time to use our TPMS relearn tool. Now, if you take a look, we're just going to turn it to the run position. We're not going to turn the engine on. You can see our tire pressure. We've got 70 pounds in the front, 64 uh, in the back. The rear tires actually have 70 and the fronts have uh, 64 uh, in them. And uh, I'm going to leave this running and grab my other camera and show you how this is done. First thing we need to do is put this into the relearn state. And how you do that is by having it in the run position, not running, and just hold this button down. You're just gonna hold it down for a few seconds. And then you see it's asking us if we wanna relearn. Now we're gonna say yes, and then I'm getting out of the truck to use the tool. So we're just gonna go ahead and say yes. We heard the double honk, so we know it is active. So with our tool, we are going to start at the driver's side front. And we're just going to put it right here. Hold it down until it honks. Then we are moving to the next tire, which is going to be the passenger side front. Again, right next to the valve stem on the tire. Hold it down. Honks. Now we move to the rear passenger side. Same thing, valve stem. Hold it down. Heard it honk. Move it on. Right to the valve stem. And she honked again. And then double honked. So now we know that we are done. Let's take a look inside. That looks a whole lot better and was super easy. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm going to have this Silverado forever. I've already got a bunch of other videos about it. So uh, be sure you check them all out if you've got a 2021 uh, Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. Uh, it might be something there you like. If not, I'll definitely have more videos. So come along for the ride. See you guys down the road. You know, don't forget to remove... A front wheel chalk. Suck if that thing were still there when you went to drive away. If you got the air monitoring system, the air pressure monitoring system, probably just want to drive it. It'll figure it out. I hope so. What if it doesn't? That'd be embarrassing. I forgot all about that in this video. I'm just gonna assume I'm good. Just check them all. I missed one, but I didn't.